Okay, the recording is on. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC 310, our course on church and ministry administration. Thank you for um, joining the class today. Uh, could one of us please open up with prayer? Just pray and commit our time together uh, to the Lord. Somebody could lead us in prayer, please. Okay. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful to you. Always you tell us that we we become constant in prayer, we pray always, but also rejoice. So we are mm. rejoicing uh, because you have brought us this far. Lord, we thank you that we are learning even as we take this time to learn about administration, Lord, help us to do it because you are our greatest example. Mm. You are our mentor. You are our teacher. Lord, here we are. Come and teach us so that we will be able to run the ministries that you have appointed us to do very well. And Lord, I pray that you will give the right vocabulary to our teacher and that all will be for the glory of your name in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you good morning everyone welcome um to um our lecture here on uh, church and ministry administration we are in our lesson on um, church staff management we've been on it now for a few lectures um, we're just looking at various aspects of uh, taking care of the church staff people who are working full-time for the church or the christian organization how do we uh, take care of them how do we work with them and different aspects of church staff management so I'm just going to quickly review, and then uh, we will move forward. All right. So, church stuff. So we we uh, covered quite a bit of ground so far, and uh, through the hiring process and employee compensation benefits employee management which is what we spent time on last week how do you um, take care of employees and uh, i mentioned last week about you know employee satisfaction survey typically you would do it once a year and just to get some feedback um, from staff and uh, of course most of this is done anonymously so people are free to share their thoughts and uh, they can give you feedback on you know what's happening within the organization um, an annual planning so once a year we encourage people our staff each one to uh, plan to uh, one sorry to review their the year so usually we do it in November November December so people will take time to review the year that is gone or that is about to finish and also plan for the year up ahead and also beyond that so uh, I've, I've shared this document with you uh, the word document and we, we will modify it a little bit you know from year to year just to um, change it a little bit depending on what we want to address but I've given you one one document or one sample uh, it basically you know says okay this what are your role what what, what is that person's role what what, what are their, their areas of responsibility then they assess the previous year. What did what went well? What are the new things that happened? What were the areas where things were not done? You know where you could have done better. And then uh, so we review that. And then it's okay. What are your plans for the next year? That plan will be in detail. Uh, they would plan out what 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 things they're going to do. And then beyond that, in the next three years, uh, it, so that they have kind of an overall direction where they are going in their areas of ministry. Uh, 
So that's what this planning document is about. Uh, and we do it once a year. It's, a, it's just a, a time for people to pause, think, review, and look ahead. And then I, uh, you know, I would meet with uh, the the main leaders to, to just go through their document, and then they would uh, the team leaders would then review uh, the work of their team members. So um, um, it's a chance to sit down and talk about things, and also it's a chance for people to express. Um, where they want to go in the future, you know. Okay, maybe they want to change a little bit. Maybe uh, in the in the work they are doing, maybe they want to get into some new areas. Okay, now this is a good chance to say that you know, in the next year or the next two years, uh, I like to move into something different. Good, you know, it's a chance to talk about it, so that uh, we can then try to help them uh, make prepare for that transition. So, in addition to this planning document. Uh, so this planning, this one happens once a year, uh, you know, so that means you're waiting almost 12 months. But then what we also do is to have regular review meetings and we do it in different ways. Um, one is uh, I would meet with people uh, every month or once in two months at least, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, so we sit down and talk, uh, especially all our pastors, ministry leaders, so on, just review what's going on uh, with them. And so that's one set. Then on a monthly basis, we get everybody together. That means like uh, uh, all the pastors uh, come together once a month. Where we talk, you know, it's, just, it's on a Saturday for two hours. Uh, we, uh, and, and the me meetings vary. Sometimes it's just, okay, you know, what is going on in each of your areas of ministry? You just share a little bit. Uh, or we may have to discuss some administrative things, so on and so forth. So, so it happens at an individual level uh, every month, or at least once in two months. Uh, when we were smaller, you know, meeting everybody once a month was easier. Uh, but uh, when the number of people are more, um, then uh, yeah, it's it's not easy to fit everybody within one month. So uh, sometimes it'll happen once in two months, uh, and then. The group meeting is typically once a month, like everybody together. So these are the opportunities for us to discuss things, review how things are going, you know, and, and people can share whether it's their own personal challenge or whether it's something in their area of ministry and so on. So it's it's open to all kinds of uh, points of discussion. And um, aside from that, just in everyday interactions, you know, uh, giving feedback to people receiving feedback is is normal so we don't have to wait for that formal once a month meeting it's just on a day-to-day -day basis hey you know um, something can be done better you just go ahead and talk to the person directly and so that happens all the time every week based on you know our interactions we share things so that is more of informal way mm, of giving feedback and discussing things uh, we also spoke last week about handling Underperforming, underperforming employees. That means, if uh, and we will talk more about it uh, in the next section. Uh, if if somebody is not doing well in their work, uh, we must not ignore it, right? You just don't turn a blind eye and pretend everything is okay. No, if they're not doing their work, you need to talk to them about it. Uh, you need to let them know that you know, hey, these are areas where they need to improve. Uh, these are areas where they are falling short. Uh, find out why they are falling short. Maybe you know they don't have the necessary skills. Maybe they're, they're not understanding what's supposed to be done, etc. You know, there could be so many reasons. But basically, you're trying to help them, you know, perform or you know at least maintain the expected level of performance. So we will have to address it. Now, uh, here's my thing. Yeah, uh, we should not ignore that you see like uh, sometimes what i've noticed uh, in 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 christian organizations especially even in mission organizations is uh, people don't want to address underperformance they want to they don't want to talk about it and if people are not doing well people are just you know uh they're just there and they're not doing well they don't want to address it they don't want to say hey if you don't do well you're going to lose your job 
they don't like that kind of conversation and uh, you know because it's a very difficult thing to do you know uh, to have such kind of conversations with people and so they just keep quiet and so what happens this thing just continues and it impacts the whole organization it impacts the ministry it impacts how people are being served and so on uh, so it's not a good thing to keep quiet but you must I want to encourage you as a leader or team leader or manager whatever position role you may have or as the pastor you need to address it you need to sit down and talk and always do it in love but you're doing it uh, with the interest of the organization you know uh, and, and the interest of the people who are being served you have to address these things and like I said last week it's good to do these kinds of things in face-to-face -face meetings. You know, it's better to sit and talk to somebody. Now, if you cannot meet them in person for practical reasons, then of course try to do it on a call or notice on a video call. I'll try to talk about it. And the sending an email is only the last resort, right? Um, uh, but having had your meeting, having had the discussion, then it's important to put everything in writing so that people don't forget what was addressed. So, so. We covered till that point, um, and we're going to move forward and talking about employee development and so on. Um, any thoughts, any questions uh, from anybody? Maybe you thought about it over the week or anything else came up you want to discuss before we move forward? Okay, let's go ahead. We will now go forward to talk about uh, employee development so as part as a pastor as a leader of you know the organization or whatever responsibility you have here in the organization uh, you you know you have to look out for developing the people that means uh, uh, every individual in the organization should constantly be learning and be growing uh, themselves professionally and of course now because we're a Christian organization we also want to uh, address the spiritual side so there is the professional side which has to do with their work and then there is the spiritual side which has to do with their spiritual growth and maturity and development of character and so on so employee development in a Christian organization is a little bit more than you know what we would say in a corporate organization. In the corporate organization, you're looking at primarily their skills, their professional growth. In the Christian setting, you have to look at the professional growth and also the spiritual growth. Now, sometimes we could make a mistake and look at only one side. You know, maybe a Christian organization, okay, we're all with Christian, it's a Christian ministry, so we only are thinking about their spiritual development. I'm talking about of the employees. Uh, that is important, but don't forget they have to grow professionally also. And so, uh, you need to have some sort of a, or multiple ways if possible to help and encourage that some of the things that we do of course is uh, you know on the job training we, you know people are off hopefully and they should be learning as they're doing things so you're giving them opportunities to learn and as they're doing things they're learning from their peers their colleagues their team members and you're challenging them with new tasks new new responsibilities so that's that's going so that's going on all the time. Uh, we also encourage people, of course, to, you know, nowadays a lot of this training can happen online. And many of these things are available for free. So we encourage people to do that. Um, and, and so especially the media team, the IT team, they are, you know, uh, for them, getting their skills up is very important because it's just always new things happening and new things coming out uh, at a much greater pace. So they need to be encouraged. Uh, the other things we provide is also we tell them, you know, all our staff can do uh, up to two Bible colleges for free every semester. And it's considered part of their work hours. So that means four hours a week, they can attend classes if they want. Uh, and uh, it'll be considered part of their work hours and they don't have to pay for it. So that's just something we make available and some, some people make use of that. Uh, we also... Uh, we have weekend schools which happens once a month on a saturday and we said they can attend weekend schools for free they don't have to pay and uh, the time spent at the weekend school 
will be considered part of the work hours. So they spend you know about eight hours in the weekend school. That's considered part of the work. So this as an encouragement to keep them spiritually built. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, we have made this provision. Um, then for their professional growth, um, of course, one is to give them you know new projects, new opportunities, or to increase their responsibility. So you're always watching over people, and you're saying that hey, I can, you know, I can uh, give this person more opportunity. I can give this person more responsibility. You know, so you're basically helping them grow. You know, step by step. Okay, they do well in one level, take them up. Okay. Why don't you lead the team? You've been a good team leader, so a good team member. So why don't you become a team leader, lead a team, or take care of, uh, lead two, three people, or take up this particular project and get it done? You know, so within the organization, you're constantly looking at uh, getting people up to higher levels by giving them new projects, new opportunities, increased responsibilities, or uh, as appropriate, you can even give them new roles that are. Uh, carry more responsibility and leadership. So you're looking at constantly uh, developing people within the organization. Um, some of the other things that we are, are doing is um, we have uh, monthly staff meetings. So for example, today, which happened on the last Thursday of the month. So today is the last Thursday of the month. So today we have a staff meeting uh, in the afternoon, two o'clock to 4.30, and, uh, and then usually in these staff meetings, uh, uh, there is usually a time for training. So one hour where we will talk about something new. So right now we're you know, doing, a, um, we're talking about uh, project planning and estimation. So we want all the, all our staff to have some understanding of how do you plan a project and do an estimate, cost estimate, time estimate, a resource allocation for a project? Because you know, um, so many things in the ministry work of the ministry can be handled on small projects. You know, even preparing for a conference can be treated like a project. So to get them to understand and to do it. So right now, that's kind of the learning thing that we're doing as church staff. And so today, uh, different people will be making presentations. So they were given different uh, projects to do. So today, they, they as a team, so one team member will be presenting, okay, you know, this is the project, this is how we are, pla we've planned it out, this estimate, cost and time estimate, this is how we allocate resources, etc. So it's a learning thing. And then, of course, the practice projects all connected to real areas of ministry that we are involved in. So like this, we, um, you know, in these staff meetings, it, it, it's a, there's a constant learning happening. People are encouraged to learn, or maybe I should say they are, you know, in team, in groups, they are uh, uh, encouraging each other to learn and to, uh, to improve skills, develop skills. And then, of course, we have told them to use tools. So uh, we... Uh, of course, the basic one is, uh, you, you know, you can use a spreadsheet, but we also expose them to uh, software that's available to do these kinds of things. But, you know, so step by step, they can uh, grow in these things. The point is, the organization, the Christian organization, should think of developing people. Uh, don't just look at, okay, they're coming, they're doing their work, they're doing the ministry, they're going back. No. They have to grow. The people have to grow. And uh, think of ways you can grow the people because if the people grow, the organization can, you know, is obviously going to benefit, which means the church or the ministry is going to benefit. Right? Any, I'll pause here. Thoughts, any questions so far on, on this, on employee development? Everybody okay? With All right. So let's go forward. The next part uh, in church staff management is doing the performance reviews appraisals. So uh, we do this once a year. 
at uh, APC. Now, some organizations could do it twice a year. Some may even do it three times a year. It just depends on how they want to do it. Uh, typically, at, you know, at least once a year you do it. Where we, the employee is challenged to look back and eval evaluate their own performance and is also given feedback by their immediate, um, you know, I'd use the word team leader or you know, if you want to use the word manager or supervisor, or whatever, the whoever they're working under or working reporting to would give them feedback on how the year has been uh, in terms of their work and how they've done. And then based on that, we revise the salary. Now, oh, so typically, uh, so like I said, the, the performance review document, which we spoke about earlier, forms the basis of the discussion. So the the staff would fill it out, they would write down you know, their thoughts, and then they would sit with their team leader and they will have a conversation, they'll do that. Um, now, we are moving towards a more metric, so that's a very subjective base. Now that's, you know, it's more on conversation and assessment and so observation and so on. We're also looking at moving into a metric base where we say, okay, let's put some, you know, let's rate yourself and so on. Uh, that's okay, but we, you know, uh, we don't want the focus to become on numbers, but we really want it to be on, especially because as a Christian ministry, so many subjective things are there. Uh, we want it to be on, how, you know, how did you, how well did you do? How well did you serve the people? How well did you do your work? Uh, and so on. So there is both. There is this documented conversation, subjective assessment, which is very specific to the individual. And then there is also, you know, uh, a, a rating based on some general areas, like I, and I've shared that document with you. You know, how did well, your creativity, innovation, problem solving, uh, those kinds of things, you know, the person, the leader who's working with the individual obviously will know all the situations they've gone through and how they did uh, in those situations and where they can improve. So those things can be rated and discussed as well. So both things are there uh, as part of this performance review. And then based on that, we would give uh, uh, a salary increase. So the salary increase is usually comes into effect every January. So every January, uh, all the staff typically would have an increase in their salary unless they did not perform well the previous year. You know, if they didn't, and it has happened in some cases where we just tell the people, look, uh, or tell the individual that, you know, see, uh, we will not be raising your salary this year because, um, you know, what we had talked about for this year, things were not accomplished. It was just status quo, you know, so this year was the same as the previous year, nothing New happened. You didn't take it, take things up. Uh, so we're just going to leave your salary where it is. It has happened on you know some rare occasions, um, but the usual thing is everybody does. You know, I would say everybody is working hard and doing well, and so we uh, they get a uh, an increment a raise every January. So that's normal. It also makes them feel valued, and you know, of course, the cost of living expenses go up. Uh, and so that's important for them to have an increase. Um, and just a side note, that increase, of course, depends on the organization doing well financially, right? So you, you need to have the money to pay the people. So, uh, uh, and, and thank God in our journey so far, that's been the case. You know, we've, we've not lacked the money, funds to pay people. So um, thank God we're able to do that. Now, if an organization doesn't have the means to do it, obviously they cannot, you know, increase people's salaries if they don't have the money and, and then you can't blame the people for it. It's just the situation that uh, doesn't allow for increase in salary. But uh, under you know, all things being normal, and um, uh, the, 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 if the ministry or the church is receiving sufficient funds to pay salaries and increase salaries, then I think it should happen. Uh, 
you know, at those regu regular periods of time. Um, a few things before we wrap up this lesson is on dealing with difficult situations. Um, what we do have, or we try to follow is, we just call it a three strikes approach. And that means you're given two chances. Third time the same thing repeats, there will be a consequence, right? So, and, and we're talking about, you know, we're not, we're not talking, we're not talking about, you know, regular mistakes people make. I mean, we all make mistakes. Somebody forgets something, or, you know, all that. But that that we're not talking about that. We're talking about serious situations, difficult situations. Example would be if somebody gets into a quarrel or a, they mistreat somebody else in the office. That's not good, right? You're, 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 um, uh, you're um, at, you know, hurting somebody else in the in, in, in the team. There's conflict. So, of course, we all have disagreements and abuse and opinions, and so that's normal. That's 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 okay. Perfectly fine. That's healthy. You know, we we have different ideas and we share ideas, so we agree and disagree with each other on certain things. So that's normal. You know, we're not talking about that. I'm talking about when somebody's mistreating somebody else and then they they are harsh towards them in some way you know maybe it's verbal sometimes it <laughs> uh, it could be by just not treating them properly so on so that could be a situation so they speak uh, bad or maybe you know um, they don't handle finances properly maybe they they mishandle money Maybe they don't deliver on something important, you know, uh, uh, example, you know, if you're getting ready for a major conference or event and they're supposed to have got something done, they don't get it done. Well, uh, it's serious because it impacts everybody else. So then what do you do? First warning. So first time it's happened, okay, you, we sit down and say, hey, this was important, this was you know, you had the time to do it, you had everything to do it, but it wasn't done, it wasn't, or it wasn't done well, whatever, you know, so you give feedback and that's warning one. So you, uh, you send an email saying, okay, now after the conversation, you record it, this is strike one, or, you know, this is like, this is uh, a warning. So if that repeats again, okay, again, second time, you're not taking action, but you are having the conversation, you're giving feedback, and again, it's documented. It's a repeat now. So two times already now, they know third time there's going to be consequence. And depending on the nature of what, what, what the situation is, it could either result in a change of role. Uh, so you take them out, maybe they're just not suited for those that kind of role, reassign them to something more simpler, something that they can handle, uh, or it might result in, uh, uh, you know, sometimes it maybe uh, the impact could be a change in the salary, okay? We are, we, we are reducing your role, so your salary is also revised for that. Or sometimes it results in termination, that means, you know, hey, you're not performing, you're not doing what you're supposed to do, we have to let you go. So these are difficult situations, but uh, it's a, there's a clear way in which you handle these things. You know, two warnings, a third time it's repeated, there has, there has to be a consequence. And then the consequence is, you know, depending on the nature of what happens. Now, some situations, I, I will come to the questions on the chat, let me, I'll just say this. Some situations will result in immediate termination. Um, immediate termination. Now, in our staff guidelines, we have a code of conduct. We, there's are certain things we are, we don't, you know, we don't tolerate. If there is a clear lack of integrity, especially if it's handling, uh, you know, if if it's lying, stealing, those kinds of things, or if there's a clear misbehavior in the office, there's immediate termination. I mean, especially in our setting, because we're a Christian organization, certain things are very important for us. So 
uh, I'll just give an example uh, or you know, some examples, uh, and, and I'm not saying this to you know uh, all these people. You know, we love them. We are not against them. But um, if certain actions or behavior don't match up to what we we require in a Christian organization, those things will result in immediate termination. That means we don't even give them 30-day notice. Uh, so usually. In uh, when we are terminating, we have a notice period, thirty day notice. That means we they, they are paid for the next thirty days, and you know then they move out. So, for example, one situation happened where there were two married people, orchard staff, and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, and I just noticed, I, I, and I, you know, uh, our office, uh, you know, intentionally everything is glass, all the doors, everything is glass. You can see everything was going on. Now, here was a man who was married with, you know, wife and two kids. Here's a lady, um, her husband had passed away, but she had two, and she had two kids. So I, I understand her situation. And, uh, but this man and this lady started getting very close to each other. And I was like, uh, it wasn't nice. It, you know, so I saw this and then I went and spoke to the man. I said, see, you are married. Now I'm talking, these are church staff, okay? These are not like people outside. It's right in the office. So when I spoke to him, I said, see, you're married. You have your wife, you have two kids. I understand the lady's situation, her husband's passed away. But you have to be careful. And I don't want to, you know, see anything happen here. And uh, so I kind of I gave him a warning very so he knew that hey, I have noticed something, I've noticed thing. I, I, I just spoke to him, I said, don't do anything, you know, talk spoke about it. The next time I saw something happen, that's it. My decision was made. We will not tolerate something like this in the church office. So I, I mean, I, 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 this happened many years ago, so I don't remember the exact day of the week, but whatever day of the week, then I told both of them, I said, please meet me on Saturday in the church office. And I told the man, I said, I want you to bring your wife. And I told this lady, I want you to bring your daughters in the church office on Saturday. I Saturday because other people will not be there. So that Saturday in the afternoon, they all came. And so I asked us, I made them sit down in front of me, asked them, you know, is there something going on here? You know, what's going on? They denied it, both of them. Then I said, okay. Let me talk to your wife. So I called the wife and I said, is something going on? Then the wife opened up. She said, my husband comes home and all evening he's on the phone talking to that lady. Now, I didn't know this, but right there the wife is telling me. All evening he's at home talking to this lady. I don't know what is going on and I don't know what, whom to talk to and so on. Then I called the, that lady's two kids to come in, you know, hey, and, and they were they were teenagers, so I, I asked them, and they said, yeah, you know, this thing is, oh, they're just on the phone all the time, and this thing. So then I knew that what I, you know, in some way suspected or observed was a serious thing, and it was impacting these families. No more questions. Right then and there, both were dismissed. I said, please take your things, don't come back to the office finished it's over because i had given them a warning and this was a very serious situation now so they, they were terminated immediately in immediate termination but then you know we care about them as people right okay from a organization perspective we had to make this decision but then they are people and they're going through challenges. And so outside of this, I met with them separately, uh, numerous occasions, trying to resolve you know, the actual family problem because they're also part of the church, they're part of the congregation. So from a 
staff perspective, yes, there was immediate termination. But then outside of this, I met with them. I met with the, wife, the lady with her children, trying to you know sort things out. This the other family trying to sort this out. So that was done outside of you know employment context, more as church people context. And sadly, in that situation, things went from bad to worse, and you know uh, it, it just deteriorated, deteriorated completely. And it 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 was a very messy thing. But I'm just giving an example, and this have you know I'm giving an example where there are there will be difficult situations, and you have to have the courage to take action, and sometimes immediate action is important. Now, one of the things, now, so I've given you, you know, one example, but another thing that's very important is conflict. Conflict. That means if, and especially it has to do with, say, example, one, one situation was uh, people who were part of our pastoral team, but they were having conflict. They were, you know, in conflict with church people. Again, we don't tolerate that. Can I, you're in leadership. You've got to be loving towards people. You've got to care for people, and you can't, you know, um, get into strife and conflict with people. And that's not tolerated. Also, you know, so those are things where you're clear. It's going to result in something that's very drastic and immediate. Uh, of course, you know, there's a way we do it. There's a process of you know telling people, talking to, and so on. But it will result in some action consequence for that those kinds of uh, behavior okay let me pause here and then take time to discuss things see if there are questions here okay all right okay there are a couple of questions in the chat all right i don't want to scare all of you uh you know i'm just telling you these are the real things that happen even in christian organizations christian ministry uh, and you've got a deal with it, you've got to address it, okay? And um, all right, let's take up Roshan's question, how to tackle underperformance? Okay, Roshan, so uh, when you see somebody who's not performing, uh, the first thing is, of course, to find out why they're underperforming, then see how we can help them, you know? What can be done? Maybe they need some training. Maybe they need uh, somebody to help them, to mentor them, uh, and so on. See if they can be helped. And then you're giving them time, of course. And if things don't change, then you have to think of what is going to be, what would be the most appropriate action. Do they need to be reassigned to a different role where maybe the work is something they can handle better? Yeah, so maybe they're in the wrong place. So do you need to reassign them? Uh, is it a, just a lack of motivation? Like, uh, they're not motivated, they're disinterested, then that's something you can't fix it because that's coming from their heart. You know, we to find out, you know, why are you not interested in your work? Maybe they just are doing it for a job and be somebody forced them to come. I don't know. So those are things we can't help. You know, we, yeah. Um, uh, or sometimes people may be going through difficulty in life, right? They may be having some personal situation uh, in the family or at home or whatever. And so, okay, then you're understanding, okay, you know, we'll wait over the next couple of months so that those situations resolve. Then, you know, but then it's, it's a clear understanding saying, look, I understand that right now you're going through a difficulty, uh, but then this cannot continue forever, right? Uh, because, it, you know, their underperformance will affect everybody else. So how are we going to resolve this? When is it going to be resolved? When can I expect things to get back on track? So we will have to have those conversations, see how they can be helped. But eventually, if things don't change at some point, you have to take a call, right? and which means that if they have to be relieved from their work, that has to happen, which has happened. You know, and as a Christian organization, if we don't do it, then we are actually wasting resources. We're wasting time. We're wasting money. And that role could be given to somebody else who will do a great job and can bless many people. 
you know so we'll have to make those decisions okay elisha when a christian organization fails to pay the approved legal minimum wage uh, with the excused sacrifice how should it be treated by the staff um well i think the decision the final decision is with the staff the staff can make a decision you know uh okay i'm not getting paid what i should uh, or what i would like to so i have a choice i can continue working here and knowing that i am sacrificing something in order to work here or i can definitely go out and get a different job that would pay me differently maybe pay me better uh, in order to take care of all of my financial needs so i think the end decision is with the staff the staff should not feel obligated to work for the christian organization there is no obligation the staff has a freedom to make the decision to i can the staff can decide to sacrifice and work or the staff can say i can move out to another place where i would get paid better and there's nothing wrong either however they decide right the only thing is it shouldn't be done the decision should not come out of an obligation it shouldn't come out of oh if i don't stay if i don't sacrifice and stay here god will get angry with me god will get upset with me no it's it's really you know what what is god doing in your life how is god leading you uh, make you are free to make that decision follow god's will god's leading yeah okay all right um abraham uh pastor you know says uh, what happens if they leave the church would you allow them to go all right so uh, so uh, i suppose abraham is um, talking about the situation that i just described which happened some years ago yes both of them left the church i mean right right that time they left because they were disciplined and and um, they did leave now i did meet with them you know subsequently to have conversations and all that um but both of them left the church and um yeah we, we let them go you know we don't can't control people uh and we're not going to spoil their name or they're not going to call everybody in the city and you know tell them no that's not that's not what we do uh they they already they decided to leave and that that was their choice we didn't interfere with that decision okay shri kumar yes your question thank you sir uh, sir um i just want to know uh, something um um i really don't know what i did is right or wrong um when i was serving in a church uh, not the current church where i am going right now um uh, actually there are certain things happens um, happened there so one of the leader um, uh, um got, the pastor has allowed him to serve on the pulpit um with pastor's knowledge um, you know he had a given relationship and later i came to know and um, he got married with that and she was a muslim girl and um, actually i i actually i spoke to two three times with the pastor and uh, and the pastor has not took it seriously then then i took a decision uh, to step down from my uh, from my leadership thing and i came out from the church so mm -hmm. i just want to know that what i did is right or wrong because uh, from my point of view whatever how much i can able to make the pastor to understand um but um end of the day it was his call but uh, but many people said you did wrong <laughs> so i don't know what i did is right or wrong mm. so, yes thank you mm. okay um yeah so now uh, I, I will i will answer in brief but I, I don't know, like check my like, and, and I don't want to necessarily get into what happened to the other person who, you know, was having a live-in relationship and who was also allowed to minister. Now, obviously, uh, um, that is wrong. You know, like if a person is doing something immoral, uh, and then yet, then definitely you don't want, and is living that way for you know whatever period of time. 
uh, and doing something wrong. And you don't want that person to be given the pulpit, especially to be ministering to people. That obviously is wrong. Uh, I don't know all the details, but I'm just responding to the information you shared. Yes, so that definitely is wrong. Uh, that's definitely something we, the Bible also doesn't approve of. And, and and we wouldn't even you know we we wouldn't support that. So I think I mean my response would be you know see the Bible tells us that each one should be fully persuaded in their own minds and this is Romans chapter fourteen. That means uh, you, you know if you're convinced that hey this is wrong, uh, it's not according to the teaching of the Word of God because somebody who's ministering the Word should be held in higher uh, standard, James chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. So, um, but that, you know, and, and so what's happening here is not right. The Bible tells us, you know, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, you know, an elder who is sinning, uh, you, need, you need to correct that person. You know, and and you can't just ignore that. So she as a person who's ministering the word, I'm assuming some sort of a spiritual leadership has been given to that person, but they are in open sin, and of course they have to be corrected. The Bible teaches us that, and so that's not happening. Then you have the right to decide that this is something I don't want to support, I don't agree with, and I wouldn't want to stay here. So, if you ask me, I think, you know, you did whatever is in your heart, and doing that is the right decision. There's, there's no point in sitting there and just tolerating something that, that is uh, obviously wrong and pretending that you're okay with it. I mean, that's not, that's not helping anybody, you know. So, you can you were felt you felt convinced in your heart that this is wrong. It's not being addressed. I have brought it up, but it's being overlooked, it's neglected. I do not want to support this kind of thing. So I am removing myself from that situation, from that environment. And I think it's the right thing to do. Because each one of us, we have to be true to our own heart. You know what you're convinced. You have to be true to yourself, and you did the right thing. So uh, that's my that would be my response. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Any other thoughts here? Okay. So let me just uh, uh, you know say something, and then uh, we will go for a break. You know, when we are talking about. Uh, Dealing with difficult situations. I want to, I want to say this: uh, that the easier thing to do is to ignore the situation, to pretend it's not happening. But that is also the more dangerous thing to do, because you can imagine it like this. I'm just using a, a, an analogy that. A difficult thing is like a cancer, you know. A difficult, you know, if somebody is not having good relationship with other people, they're mistreating people. They're having, uh, you know, a very, uh, you know, a, 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 a behavior that's always creating conflict, or maybe it's some. Sometimes it could be unethical. It could be a lack of integrity. It could be immoral. Whatever, you know. There's a whole spectrum of things. That, if you see it and you ignore it, it's like a cancer. It's always easier to deal with the cancer when it's in its initial stage, like this stage one, you know. And of course, you need to you check: is it malignant? Is it benign? It's malignant. I need to deal with it, right? Even if it's a benign thing, it has potential to you know impact the life of the person. Deal with it. So. It's always better to deal with these matters at the first instant. That means as soon as you see it, deal with it. Don't ignore it. Don't pretend it's not there. 
because if you just overlook it just remain quiet it's going to grow it's going to grow and soon that very thing can destroy it can destroy maybe even the whole body and we can't blame the people we have to blame the leadership the leadership did not deal with it at the first instant. They just ignored it. They just pretended it was not there. And what could have been addressed in stage one reached stage four, and the whole body was destroyed. Who's responsible? The leadership. So, uh, you know, I want to leave you with that thought, and that uh, you know, we must be aware and watchful, and then take action uh, as required, and don't feel guilty. Of taking firm action you're doing it in the best interest of the body it's like the surgery you know you, you have to cut it out it's painful at that moment but you know what it's for the good of the body stage one early stage detected dealt with the body will have a long life if ignored reach a stage four the body will be destroyed it's too late to do anything okay um, Take a break. We will come back after the break. And if you have any questions, we'll take it up. Thank you.